Yo, 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 welcome back again today, guys. Today, we're going to be talking about the original people of Australia. The first and original peoples of Australia are the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. It is believed they are the oldest human population outside of Africa and migrated to Australia from Africa 70 to 80,000 years ago through Asia. These people have over 300 different language groups such languages as Torres Strait Island languages, Torres Strait Creole, Australian Aboriginal languages, and Australian Aboriginal English. Less than 15 ancient languages are still spoken overall, with many of the ancient languages dying. These First Nations and peoples can be broken down into two categories of peoples. The Aboriginal groups were on the island of Australia before the British colonized the island in 1788. The Torres Strait Islanders are descendants from peoples of the Torres Strait Islands. These islands are part of modern Queensland, Australia. We must note that not all of these numerous groups would like to be called this umbrella term. Regional terms are more preferred in some groups. Some, like the Kueri in New South Wales, want to be called Kueri. In Queensland, the peoples are known as Murray. There are many similarities to different various groups, but also there's many differences that are diverse. Different customs and languages can be different, similar, or overlapping with many groups. Many different groups live different lives, with most being semi-nomadic and others being hunter-gatherers. Different groups would create different famous war, hunting, and musical tools we will speak of soon. Advanced methods of farming, especially yams, and the slash and burning technique happened before European contact. Also large stone fish traps in which the fish would go through a small entrance that would be later shut off by themselves. Canoes were also created from trees. Spears were created, knives, grinding and eating devices, and shelters. Trade networks and routes were also established by various Aboriginal peoples to trade goods with one another. There is also evidence that Aboriginals were trading with other Aboriginal peoples throughout the Pacific Islands and Asia. Many nations within Australia were allies with each other, while some warred with each other. Once the European British arrived in Australia, they would be ordered to explore the island. Some were commanded to make peace and bring gifts to the First Nations, while others did as they pleased. William Dampier landed on the west coast of Australia in 1688. He stayed for almost 12 years, but was not impressed with the people nor the land. James Cook explored the east coast of the island and was highly impressed with the land and people. He would claim the land as a territory of Britain in the name of King George III. He has this to say in his journal. From what I have said of the natives of New Holland, they may appear to some to be the most wretched people upon earth. But in reality, they are far more happier than we Europeans. Being wholly unacquainted not only with the superfluous, but the necessary conveniences so much sought after in Europe. They are happy in not knowing the use of them. They live in tranquility, which is not disturbed by the inequality of condition. And that is what James Cook had to say while on the island. Cook also had an encounter by two aboriginals where a man threw a rock at Cook and Cook shot him with a gun in his back. The man did not seem to be phased, while the other man blocked the small round with his shield. This shield was took back to England by Cook and is in the museum now. Cook's writings would lead to the British colonization of Australia. The first fleets arrived in Botany Bay, New South Wales, in 1788. Within the next 50 years, the British would also settle in surrounding islands like Tasmania. 
No treaties would be set up or signed for Australia. One of the first downfalls for the Aboriginal peoples was the introduction of smallpox and measles. Massacres would soon follow by the British. Conflicts would begin to pop up all around the island as the British tried to take control of the land and the island. The British would start to control water sources and the killing of kangaroos, which were a food source for the Aboriginal peoples. Also another downfall was the introduction of cattle and sheep, which would graze on land. And this was introduced by the Europeans in the rural lands. And they converted this area for the animals. Rape and prostitution of Aboriginal women was also happening. Throughout the 1700s to 1900s, such practices as blackbirding, Aboriginal women believed to have bigger lungs, creating the pearling industry, in which they were killed for, and Aboriginal people being overcharged in prison terms and forced to work chained up. The hiring of Aboriginals as police, then using those same police to kill other Aboriginal groups and resistance groups, also added on to conflict. The frontier wars also play a picture in all of this. There was much racism throughout the conquest of Australia becoming a colony for the British Empire. This racism can be seen throughout the history of modern European Australia. Government encroachment on Aboriginal lands, racism, and lack of compensation and acknowledgement of wrongdoing to the peoples was not realized until the mid-1900s. Over time, some of the British would intermingle with the peoples. In the 1800s to the 1900s, these children that were mixed were took from the Aboriginal peoples. Policies were passed to integrate mixed kids totally into white society and breed out Aboriginal blood. This was one way to get rid of Aboriginals. Another event known as the Stolen Generation was when the Australian government took away Aboriginal children from their parents. The Australian government had various policies and eventually stood on the argument that it was for child protection and resocialization. This stolen generation was raised to be domestic laborers and servants. They also were denied using their traditional languages and their names were changed. In 1967, the Australian government voted that federal laws would apply to Aboriginal Australians. Voting rights and citizenship were not an option for most Aboriginals until 1965. The Australian government and Australian Prime Minister, Kevin Rood, would apologize in 2008. Many iconic inventions have been created by different groups of Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islander peoples. The boomerang is known worldwide, especially known when the user throws the boomerang and it returns to them. Not all boomerangs do this, but depending on the design, some do. This happens due to gyroscopic precession. When a boomerang is thrown, the top wing is moving faster through the air as compared to the bottom wing. Because the top wing is moving in the direction of the throw while the bottom wing is moving in the opposite direction. The boomerang is a symbol of enduring strength and is used for hunting and warfare from the original peoples of Australia. These boomerangs can also be used to carve legends, traditions, and histories of various peoples into them. Interesting enough, a American food company called Outback Steakhouse is a Australian themed restaurant in over 23 countries. Throughout the company's marketing commercial history, they used the traditional sounds and songs of the Aboriginal people in their background music. They also market Aboriginal culture, like the boomerang beer sampler. The didgeridoo is also a traditional Aboriginal instrument that is world famous, especially for the sound it makes that is now intertwined with what people know of as Australia. Black as a term was used since European colonization. Some Aboriginals embraced the term black as well. African-American culture, such as hip-hop, also influenced social movements like Blacktivists and Black History Month with Aboriginal peoples. Aboriginal people were also barred enlisting into the Australian Army, 
Even with these efforts to keep them out, 1,000 Aboriginal Australians fought for Australia in the First World War. World War II would see even more joined to fight. Unfortunately, most were denied pension rights and military allowments after. One example of service was the Torres Strait Light Infantry Battalion, which was established to guard Australia's northern border in case of Japanese invasion. In the 1960s, activists would gear up and white as well as aboriginals would fight for aboriginal rights. In the 1970s, the aboriginals would finally take office in the Senate. Still to modern time, many conflicts, cases, and wrongdoings have been done to the aboriginal peoples. Elders within the community make decisions and share knowledge amongst their peoples. The belief system of the people is known as dream time or the dreaming. The creator ancestors, or the first peoples, travel across the land, naming it as they went. Many of the peoples have their own belief systems with overlapping cultures. Ancestral spirits such as the Rainbow Serpent and the Benjil are part of the different belief systems. This knowledge and dreaming has been passed down for thousands of years through dances, ceremonies, stories, and song lines. The Torres Strait Islander people have their own belief system. This system speaks of Tagai and this representation of the Torres people being sea people. They are also connected to the stars and have a system of order in which everything belongs and has its place in the world. Rock art can be found throughout the country dating back to 30 to 40,000 years ago. Art is very important and has been. Sports were also played in traditional times. The Aboriginal sport of Marnguk is a kick and catch football game played with a possum hide ball. Many historians believe the Australian modern football rules come from the Aboriginal game. There are also Aboriginals who play in the Australian Football League. So today we learn about the Aboriginal peoples and there are many groups under the Aboriginals. So please check out my new NFT and it's online collectible art called Diaspora. The link is down there below. Please like and subscribe. Turn on the bell notification so you get all my videos. Like the video so we can get this video up higher so people can have more knowledge of this. And also subscribe so we can get bigger as well. Please like me on all social medias, which is Africa Network, which is Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud, Facebook, TikTok. Each one teach one. Always love each other. Always learn from each other. And until next time, to all my Aboriginal people, keep your culture. Peace. One love. Thank you.